வக்கிரதுண்டமகாகாயம் சூரியகோட்டிசமப்பிரப நிர்விக்னம் குருமே தேவ சர்வகாரியேஷு சர்வதாம் சரஸ்வதி நமஸ்தம் பரதே காமரூபிணி வித்யாரம்பம் கரிஷ்யாமி சித்தர்பவத்தமே சதா குரவே சர்வலோகாம் ரிஷேபவரோகிணாம் நிதயேசர்வித்தியாணாமூர்த்தையே நம ஈஸ்வரோ குருராத்மேதி மூர்த்திபேதவிபாகினே வியோமவத்வியாப்தேகாய தட்சிணாமூர்த்தையே நம வசுதேவசுத்தேவம் கம்சாணோரமர்தனம் தேவகீபரமானந்தம் கிருஷ்ணம் வந்தே ஜகத்குரு ஸ்மிருதிபுராணம் சாட்சாத்தயானந்தம் வரமாணம் தத்வானம் ஓனாவது சகனோ சகவீரியங்கரவாவகை தேஜஸ்வினாவதேதமஸ்தமாவிஷாவகை
Shetka means a group of ships. Shetka means a group of ships. Shamadi Shetka means a group of qualifications which begins with Shama. The other qualifications of the Shetka was Damaha, Uparamaha, Kritiksha, Shraddha, Samadhanu. The last class we have discussed Shama and today we will take up the, the next qualification in the Shamadi Shetkam which is Damaha. Dama. What is Damaha? We have seen in Tattva Bodha the definition of Dhamma. Chakshuradi Bhagdendriya Nigraha Dhamaha. Dhamma is also Nigraha like Shama. Shama is mind management. Nigraha means management, mastery. Mastery over your mind is Shama. And mastery over the organs of perception and the organs of action, it is called Damaha. We know that we have a set of organs, Panchak Jnani and Driyani, five sense organs of perception, which we know. We have studied in Tattva so I am not repeating again what are they, so we know that. Similarly, we have five organs of action, Panchak, Karve, Indriyani. That also we know. And both this, Jnana Indriyani and Karve, Indriyani, they are external to the mind. External to the mind and therefore they are called Bhagya Indriyani. Without the mind, these Bhagya Indriyas cannot operate. But they are external to the mind. External to the mind means they are in contact with the external objects backed up by the mind. And therefore, the management of mind is Shama and the management of sense organs is Dhamma. Through, through the sense organs, the information, the data flows into the mind and the mind processes it. And after that decision is made whether to go ahead or to withdraw. So at the external level itself, we are shutting it down or we restrict the flow of sense objects towards sense organs. And that is called Dhamaha. Channelizing the faculty of perception and the faculty of action for our spiritual growth that is called Dhamaha. In Vedanta Sara, Dhamma is defined as Bhagyendriyanam tat vipirakta vishaye vyaha nivartanam. This definition is appropriate definition from the standpoint of listening to Vedanta for the for the, for the, uh, the people who want to do Shravana, who understand what Vedanta is, who have the conviction and the Shraddha in that Vedanta Shravanam. So this definition, <coughs> this definition, it says that restraining the sense organs from all objects, all Vishaya, other than Shravanam, other than Shravanam, other than listening to Shastra, is called Dhamma. And this management, this mastery of the organs, both organs of perception and the organs of action, it is possible by either by number one, <coughs> Dosha Drishti. Dosha Drishti. Seeing the defects and the, and the limitations of all the pressures which we derive through our sense organs. Any, any pleasure which we 
derived through sense organs, it is going to be limited. There is nothing called unlimited source of pleasure, unlimited source of joy. In fact, that which gives joy now will give pain later. So that is the dosha drishti. Seeing the defects. And the second one is antar mukhatvam. Antar mukhatvam. That is turning your attention towards yourself. Only when you pay attention to your emotions and your feelings, then you will know where you, you stand in terms of managing the sense organs. Whether our emotions and feelings are in within the management limit or outside, exceeded the scope of management. Therefore, we have to refrain from being extroverted. Bhagir Mukhattva. When you are Bhagir Mukhi, you will not be able to focus on yourself. You will not be available for yourself. Therefore, for self-evaluation, not self-judgment, for self-evaluation, we need to focus on ourselves. And that is Antar Mukhattva. For that, we need to have a certain time for ourselves, spend certain time in solitude and focus on oneself. Then the next one is Dhriti. Dhriti. Dhriti means courage, strength. The strength of restraining or withdrawal. Withdrawal of sense organs towards sense objects is a great strength. For example, it, it authorizes. It knows when it sees any impending danger, it will withdraw all its four legs and its head inside its shell. How much ever you try to pull it out, it will not stretch its legs and the head. So like the tortoise, one should withdraw oneself completely. A spiritual aspirant should be able to withdraw completely his sense organs when he feels that the contact with the sense organs and the sense object is not going to help him spiritually. And that is what said in the Gita, the second chapter, 58 shloka. In the Stitat Prajna Lakshana, Bhagavan says, Yada Sunharate Chayam Kurmonga Niva Sarvashaha Indriya Indriya Tejaha Tasya Prajna Pratishtita. His prajna, his wisdom, his pratishta, pratishtita, his study, who has the, the tortoise, it draws all the sense organs towards itself. Similarly, indriyani, indriyani is panchajnani, indriyani, panchakarvayantani. All should be withdrawn from indriya arthebhya, indriya arthebhya, sense objects. The sense organs should be withdrawn from the sense objects, like the kurma, like the tortoise. And that is this is the prajna lakshana. Therefore, <coughs> this restraining of the sense organs and bringing back to shravanam, mananam, and vidyasanam, that is called damaha. The restraining the sense organs is not for the sake of restraining, just restraining. It is for the application of the faculty on that which will take us forward in our spiritual journey. Therefore, overcoming of the obstacles which the sense organs provide by contact with the sense organs, it requires certain mastery over sense organs. For example, when I listen to the class, my ears should be with me. My ears should not go towards the, the towards a movie song which I which is played somewhere. Similarly, my eyes should see what I want to see. When I stand in front of the altar in the temple, my eyes should see only the Bhagavan. 
It's in the form of the Bhagavan and not the people moving around. This is what generally we see in the temples. Most of the people, they do, they do what is not supposed to be done in the temple. Therefore, one has to be very alert with the, with the senses. So you have to watch it and observe its behavior. They should not allow the sense organs to flow wherever they want. They should withdraw them. You should have the capability to withdraw them and direct them where they want them to flow. Therefore, Nigraha is channelizing the flow of sense organs like channelizing the flow of water by constructing a dam. The dam is not an obstacle for the water flow. Though it seems to be an obstruction for the water flow, it is meant for channelizing the water to the areas where water is not there, or to avoid the flow of water into the ocean and getting wasted. That is what a dam is meant for. Similarly, the, the restriction of the sense organs, when the sense organs are properly directed, it will allow only that data, that information to enter the mind, which are conducive to spiritual growth. And sense organs, they are like the door for the external organs to enter our mind. So we need to have a we need to have a close watch on the door. Always keep the door closed when anything unwanted wants to enter. Therefore, be alert, watchful. That alertness, that alert life, not casual life. That is what is required for the discovery of oneself. Therefore. Dhamma is not just closing the eyes or plugging the ears. Generally, the people think Dhamma is just shutting down the sense organs. No, it is not just for closing the eyes or plugging the ears. Sparshan Krutva Bhagir Bhagya. Gita says in the fifth chapter, keep, uh, keep the external things external. Let the external things not enter inside of you. Don't allow them inside. Don't internalize. And that intelligent way of handling these sense organs is called Dhamma. Therefore, understand that we are not asking for we are not asking for the destruction of the sense organs. We are not uh, we don't say that sense organs should be destroyed. No. In fact, the sense organs should be should be well managed and we ask in fact for the healthy sense organs so that it will be conducive for our spiritual growth. That is what in uh, many of the Shanti Pata we chant when we do the prayers, for example in the when we do when we study Keno Upanishad, we chant a Shanti Pata. Keno Upanishad belongs to Samaveda, and Samaveda has got a particular Shanti Pata. The Shanti Pata of the Samaveda, it starts like this. Apyagim Tumamangani Vagpranas Chakshishrotramato Balavindriyani Chasarvani Tanubhum Brahma Upanishadam Mahum Brahma Nira Kuryam Mama Brahma Nira Karod Anira Karanam Astu Anira Karanam Me Astu Radhmani Nirate Yavupanishad Sudharma Seva Isuntu Seva Isuntu So yeah, Apya Yantu Mama Angani What does it mean? Mama Angani, Mama Sarvani Angani Apya Yantu All the limbs of my body grow. Let it be healthy. Mama Vak, Vak is speech, Pranaha, Chakshuhu. Chakshuhu means it's only a Upalakshana. Chakshu means eyes. It means we can bring all the other sense organs. Similarly, Vak, Vak is only a Upalakshana. By Vak, we can bring all the Karmendriyami. So let all the organs of action and the organs of perception be endowed with strength. We need the healthy sense organs. So that I can inquire into the, the nature of Brahman. That is what the prayer is. Therefore, 
managing the sense organs by shifting the direction of its flow flow from the external world to the pursuit of vedanta that is called dhamma that is what they are interested in in our beginning of the spiritual journey it is better to avoid certain situations because we may not have the total mastery in the beginning since the sense organs are subjected to particular way of behavior so in the beginning we may find difficult to manage it therefore it is better to avoid such situations that avoidance is also called dhamma if we avoid so then we can prevent the sense organs from certain data which are not conducive to us from the external world so therefore to avoid what is to be avoided that is dhamma but you cannot avoid all the time sometimes we have to perceive certain things when we open up the the sense organs doesn't 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 have any door once you your eye is open so you can see your nose doesn't have door your ears doesn't have door so when it operates when it is when it when it hears the sound or when it the smell comes naturally it perceives so that time we have to use our free will to withdraw the mind we cannot blame the sense organs the sense organs they are just the reporters they report what they perceive but we can shift what is reported by the application of our mind therefore when that is why when dhamma fails then dhamma fails shama should come into operation bring shama into operation shama is master your your mind should be with you similarly when shama fails you bring dhamma into operation so in both ways then dhamma fails you bring shama into operation you have a check at the level of shama at the level of mind when shama fails you bring into operation dhamma for example you get angry the you get angry anger has come it's like it has entered you, entered you now your mind reports that you are in angry you are in anger so when your mind reports your feeling of anger that itself shows the shama has failed the first line of defense the protection it has failed anger has entered you and it has overpowered you that your mind reports now your mind is agitated it's provoked so shama has failed do shama has failed you can make dhamma active and protect yourself from the damage by the second line of defense shama is the first line of defense and when it fails then you can protect you can protect yourself from by the second line of defense that you operate from dhamma when you bring dhamma into operation then you can tell the person with who with whom you are angry with you can tell them let us not talk now we will talk later so that that is called dhamma you have control over your tongue and not react immediately to the person who made you angry and you say let us talk now we will talk later that itself is dhamma though the mind is agitated as agitated but you have control over your organs your speech that is dhamma you are angry but at the same time you intelligent intelligently avoid the the conflict with the person by postponing the dialogue for some other time so that is dhamma but here the thing is dhamma cannot solve the problem dhamma cannot solve the problem dhamma must be followed by shama if dhamma is not there then the anger will be there the anger will will not be resolved so what we need to do is we have to resolve the, the cause of the anger and therefore to resolve 
the cause of the anger to resolve those emotions which means to express them appropriately without hurting yourself and others you may adopt certain methods to resolve this puri samaji uh, you used to say when uh, you are uh, in ang- anger and you cannot even want to express when you just go away from the situation from the place and still if you feel the anger is there inside you would say you take a wet towel make a you take a towel and make it wet take a wet towel and it put it on the floor with the uh, force forcefully so that uh, is a one small technique that's a small technique by which you can uh, uh, avoid anger so this is uh, one uh, small technique which uh, somebody used to say that or you can write a letter write whatever uh, you feel about uh, the, the the person so you can write a letter but don't send it to that person you can uh, write it and read it later and throw it away or another method is you can pray to bhagwan you can pray to bhagwan and uh, so that you can see everything is in order everything is in order in the order of ishvara even the behavior of the person is uh, in keeping with the order in this way you can validate the person what the that, what the person did you will understand that anyone with the same background would do the same thing so that is what is uh, seeing the the order it is not to justify the behavior of the behavior of the person it is just to validate the person to see that the behavior of the person is in keeping with the order the person has a certain background that's what the person behaves in a particular manner if the background was not there then person that person would not have behaved in that way so the background influences the behavior so the, everyone's behavior is in is in keeping with the order it doesn't mean that it is right because something is in order doesn't mean it is right but it is in in order so when you appreciate appreciate the order then you have a certain you develop a certain commitment to growth spiritual growth and since our commitment also is growth we can practice dhamma and here an important thing to be noted with regard to the important sense organ that is the tongue the mastery over tongue our tongue has two functions our tongue it has two functions one is a function of taste the other is a function of talk tasting tongue and the talking tongue the tongue has dual function the mastery over tasting tongue is eating only those things which are conducive to our physical as well as spiritual health certain items they are conducive to physical health but not for our spiritual health therefore one has to carefully exercise the choice over what is consumed and how much when you Sharan ji, this is Anuradha. I can't hear you. Yeah, I can't hear you either. Can't hear either. No audio. Maybe some technical issue on the right.
So therefore, the, the mastery or the tasting time is very important. And another important, uh, more important is the mastery over the talking time. That is called Vak Nirodha, Vak Tapas. In fact, uh, the, the, the very first point in our spiritual sadhana is this mastery over the, the organ of speech. When we talk too much, then we should observe ourselves and realize that there is some pressure, some helplessness to talk. There is nothing wrong in talking, but when there is too much talk, then there is something Therefore, we have to this is highly talked about. It is talked about. It is going to We we'll have problems, sir, and you need to go back another yeah. minute or so. The last several sentences can't hear you. I was uh, talking about the, the mastery over the talking tongue. Talking tongue. Hear you again, Sharanji. As a very. I. Oh. Uh, now it's okay. Suddenly we again lost it. It's, it's getting broken. In between. Mm, I don't know why. <laughs> Something yeah, to do with the talking tongue. <laughs> <laughs> okay, just a minute. Let me come back. So I was talking about uh, the the talking tongue. We're talking, we are discussing about the work purpose. That is the discipline with regard to. The organ of this. I was quoting from the Bhagavad Gita, the 17th chapter, 15th shloka. The shloka says, Anudvega karam vakyam. Anudvega karam vakyam satyam priyahitam chayatu. Svadhya yaya vyasanam chayva vangmayam tapa uchyate. Can you hear me now? Yes, oh, yes. Yes. Oh, okay. yes, yes. 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 Yes, should be should be should not hurt the other person. Even if we make fun, that should hurt the other person. When you know that what you want to say <coughs> if you look at someone, then don't say it. By not saying we are not going to lose anything. So that non hurting need not be only physical. Even by words you can hurt the other person. And that is the first then you ask what is then avoiding what is what us heard to the other person. 
So one has to have it will hurt the other person and refrain from saying that. That is the work tapas. So if it comes naturally, you have the mastery over your talking tongue. The second one in the shloka, Anadvega Karam, the second one is Satyam. What we speak should be Satyam. Satyam Bada, Dharmam Chara. So what you say should be the truth. It should be, it should be truthful. The third one is Priyam. Not only Satyam, it should be Priyam. It should be pleasant to the listeners. You may speak the truth, but if it is uh, not pleasant, then nobody will be there to listen to you. Therefore, even though when you speak the truth, make sure that it is pleasant. So, Bruyat, Priyam Bruyat, Na Bruyat, Satyam Priyam. Even though what you speak is Satyam, Satyam is unpleasant, don't say even that. Don't say unpleasant truth. Then the next one is Hitam. Hitam is that should benefit the other person. When you open your mouth and say something, you want to say something, you want to convey it to the other person, that should be helpful to the other person. The conversation should be beneficial to the other person. Therefore, this Vak tapas, this mastery over the organ of, of speech. It's very important and it is the first thing recommended for us, spiritual sadhaka in this spiritual journey. So now, now we know what Dhamma is. Having understood what Dhamma is, Now we will see the significance of what Dhamma is. Dhamma at different levels of organs, at different levels of sense organs and the organs of perception. What we talked about tongue is, is applicable to other organs also. But since tongue is <coughs> it's important, it plays a vital role, therefore we talked about the particular sense organ. But that, what we talked about, that particular sense organ is applicable to the other organs also. Therefore, having mastery, the management over all the organs is Dhamma, having understood that, now we will see what is the significance, what is the, the importance of Dhamma in our spiritual journey. How does it help us? How does Dhamma help us? The first thing is, the first significance is Dhamma, it helps the sadhaka, the spiritual aspirant, to, to strengthen or to maintain Shama. Dhamma reinforces Shama. By Dhamma, restraining the sense organs from the external since objects, you allow only that information, that data, which is helpful, which is conducive for you to allow to enter the mind. Therefore, Dhamma, it helps to maintain Shama. Dhamma is like a firewall. It keeps a check on the, the inflow of the data into the mind, so that the mind can maintain its composure. You can be at peace. So if Dhamma is operative, it's well, in, well managed, then the Shama will be there automatically. That is the first significance of having Dhamma. The second one is, Dhamma will help to avoid guilt and hurt. If you see, the guilt and the hurt, it comes because of losing control over our sense organs. We saw just now about the speech. Once the words come out from your mouth, it hurts the other person, then the damage is done. If you have, if you have mastery, if you withdraw, if you, have, if you restrain the, the talking tongue, then you can avoid hurting the other person. That's what it is. If Dhamma is not there, then I will do something which I will regret afterwards. Therefore, to avoid guilt and to avoid hurt, hurting others, 
So we need Dhamma. And Dhamma, it helps a lot to conserve our time and energy. We don't have to spend time on unnecessary things. If we have Dhamma, then we are free from many problems. So if you are free from many problems, then you have time and you have space for yourself. And how to get this Dhamma? How to develop Dhamma? One of the means to get Dhamma is by following certain religious practices. So, you can say for a certain period of time, you can say no to certain things. Like, for example, Maunabrata, taking the vow of silence. Maunabrata. By observing silence, you save a lot of uh, energy. You have a lot of time for yourself. In fact, which is once a day. Not even read books. You can read books, but if it uh, diverts you, your attention, then don't do, do that also. Avoid using cell phone. Avoid watching uh, television. So, so watch yourself. Do meditation. If you are a person who talks too much and wants to reduce your talkings, then this maunam can help you. And this maunam can be observed for a once, a once in a week. So, by observing maunam, we can reduce the chatter of your mind. So, when you reduce the chatter of your mind, the mind will be available for you to summon. You can be diverted towards something which is very helpful to you. Similarly, Upavasam. Upavasam also helps. Upavasam, it helps to increase the willpower. People generally, they fast on Ekadeshi. And Ekadeshi, they observe Upavasam. Either by not eating or by eating something light. It's a very good, uh, it's a very good practice. Once in a fortnight, uh, we can fast. We can have a either full fast or semi-fast or we can skip lunch or dinner. So by doing so, what we learn is, we learn to say no to setting boga. That is called tapas. That is a, a phrase which I, which I read somewhere. Ekadashyam jine bojana dvayam kartravi. Ekadashyam jine bojana dvayam kartravi. So what do we understand? Ekadashyam jine. During Ekadashi day, Bojana Dvayam Kartavya. Bojana means what? What we understand by Bojana is food. Bojana Dvayam. Two types of food should be done, should be taken. We are talking about fasting on Ekadashi. And you are saying Bojana Dvayam Kartavya. We have to have two types of food. What is this? Is it not contradictory? No, here yeah. Bojana is food. That is what Sanskrit means. You see the beauty of Sanskrit. Bo Jana is. Bo is one word. Jana is another word. It is Sambodhana. Bo Jana. A Jana. You are calling the people. You are addressing the people. It is vocative. A Rama. Bo Jana. Bo people. Ekadashyam. Jine. Bo Jana. Bo people. Tartarvim. Dvayam Kartavyam. Dvayam is two, two things to be done. What are they? Upavasa and Upasana. That is what it means. It is not, it doesn't mean we have to have two foods, two types of food on that day. Bo Jana Dvayam Kartavyam. O people, two things are to be done on the Ekadeshi day. What are they? One is Upavasa, other one is Upasana. That is why during Ekadeshi day, people observe Upavasa and they do Krishna uh, Sarasthana Parayan. So that is what is Dvayam, Dvayam Kartavyam. Not Bojanam Dvayam Kartavyam, Upavasa Upasana Dvayam Kartavyam. And that is what happens. And by Tapar, we develop Dhamma. Therefore, we can practice Tapas to our convenience, to our limit, whatever it is possible with our limit, to that extent we can practice tapas and that helps to develop.
another way to get dhamma is introspection self introspection self introspection without self judgment we should not make a judgment about our the activity of our sense organs don't make a self judgment self judgment is is not good it should be self introspection suppose if i talk too much then i need to pay a little more attention to what i say not to blame myself because i have talked too much what i need to do is i don't judge myself with objectivity i have to look at my speech i should develop the habit of introspecting what i speak how much i speak that is one way by which we can develop dhamma another way of developing dhamma is you have the company of people who have dhamma that is that is important you have the company of people who have got a similar mindset up who are committed to spiritual growth that is such important contact with the people of the same thinking same thoughts that is important that is satsanga satsangascha vivekascha nirmalam nayanadvayam yasya nati ஒன் then how can he walk on the wrong path if the person doesn't have these two eyes yasya nasti narasondah then how can he not walk through the wrong path that is what this uh, subhashitam says so therefore <clears throat> develop and practice dhamma by any of the practice by any of the methods what you prefer and since it is a very important uh, quality and it since it comes after shama why it is mentioned after shama because if shama is there then we know we don't need dhamma when shama is not there then we need dhamma that is why dhamma is mentioned after shama and what is dhamma being alert to what i think and what they perceive is dhamma which is the an, another important qualification in the shakam after dhamma then comes the, the next qualification which is uparamaha which we will discuss in the, the next class om purnamadav purnamidam purnat purnamudachate பூர்ணமாதாயூர்ணமேவாவசிஷே ஓம் ஓம்